What is that for me to do? Okay, I can do recording, I think. He's done yeah, it. Yeah, I've done it, Tim. I'm recording. Okay, you're recording. <clears throat> well, let's just actually just go, go back to that slide, just so people can, can see what, it's, what the topics are. Right. So, yes, um, I'm just someone who I've been flying for a long time. Um, 30 years this year, actually, started in 1990. Took me 10 years to do my first 50K and then a further 11 years before I actually did 100K. And that was mainly because I wasn't going to hills where it was possible to do 100K, which is fairly fundamental. But uh, yeah, you have to think about these things. My PB is 220 kilometers um, and that was in 2015. So it's feeling like a long time ago now. I've done lots of British Open comps over the years and I've been in the advanced XC serial team um, and ambassador team now since 2014. And as a little side hustle, I uh, have been importing XC Tracer Varios for the last four years. And it's been quite busy the last few weeks with the CAA rebate scheme. So that was my first glider there, Harley Contrail. Um, and that is my current glider on the right hand side. Um, things have changed quite a lot since then. <laughs> But it's still the same sport. It's still bloody good fun, which is why we all do it. I think some of you might have seen this before, but just as a little uh, amusing thing to to uh, get us going. Ninety-nine point nine seven nine eight nine nine one hundred. So yeah, that was uh, that. That just makes me laugh every time I see that. That was my first uh, 100k uh, back in 2011. Um, sadly, though, I busted airspace. <laughs> my uh, uh, I just clipped the corner of well, not that a circle has a corner, but Chichester airspace. I just uh, I was in a climb and just sort of clipped the sort of top 100 foot as I the edge of it as I sort of climbed out through it, but. Um, it doesn't really matter too much. The just just doing that hundred k, sort of getting through that barrier, um, is such a good feeling. And once you've done done it once, you know the floodgates tend to open. Sorry, we don't want to do that. Do it again. Um, <clears throat> so yeah, let's start thinking about what we can do this time of year when we're locked in, no one to socialise with. Um, there's actually quite a lot. Think about what you want to achieve next year. Set yourself a goal, um, you know, be it 25K, 50K, 100K, 150 or whatever, 200K, but set yourself a goal and start thinking about how you're gonna do it. Um, and we'll, we'll, we'll go through some of the, uh, the ways of doing that. So, suss out sites and potential routes. Uh, learn how to use instruments and, uh, you know, learn, well, how to put airspace on them, how to um, sort of efficiently use the airspace on your instruments and actually sort of start learning the airspace. What, are, what have you got to contend with? Also really uh, gem up on RASP and weather forecasting, understand tephigrams, or, or which are, otherwise known as skew T graphs. And we'll, we'll have a little bit of a look at that. Um, now's a good time to start learning how to use XC Retrieve, the system that Alan and I um, came up with a few years ago. Think about uh, budding up with uh, some mentors. Um, 
you know, I know lots of clubs have low airtime groups, um, but maybe if you're a, a budding XC pilot, just get chatting to someone a bit more experienced just to, so you can, when the time comes, you can maybe tag along with them. Okay, you're likely to be doing a bit of <laughs> retrieve driving, which is often why uh, more experienced pilots are happy to have people coming along uh, because they might bomb out earlier than them um, and, and then do retrieve driving. But, you know, you can still learn a lot that way. Uh, have a think about your, you know, your, your work scenario. If you're really hooked on flying, maybe now's the time to think of making some changes. I mean, as, as we all know, flexibility is absolutely critical here. Um, you know, with the vagaries of the British weather, you need to be able to drop, uh, you know, have a very flexible work, ideally. Um, you know, we've all been in the situation where we've been stuck at work on lovely days and it is pretty frustrating. So let's have a look at sites. Um, the, I've got two slides here and they just give you a, a rough idea of this, this slide, the, the sites um, and the sort of distances that you can uh, go and the sort of wind direction for them. So I, I, I did this, the first side is for sort of vaguely Welsh um, sites and the other one is uh, sort of Avon and Thames Valley sites, but it doesn't really matter. Oh, Lou, yes, I will be sharing these slides. Um, yep, I will be doing that. Um, I'm not going to go through each one, but just have a look on, basically on, uh, well, actually we'll see it on the next, the next slide, um, on FlyXC, turn the, um, turn the, the uh, sky tracks sort of on and the airspace and you can pretty soon work out where the site, sites are for any, any given wind direction. Um, but just, I'll just jump back to, to these ones. So, I mean, there's no point going to, um, you know, a site like Westbury really, if you want to do 150K easily. If your goal is 150K, you know, go to somewhere like um, Selsley um, or Froster or, or the Morvans. Um, if, it's, if, you, if your goal is 100K, again, Westbury is not that great. Uh, Coombe, yes, you can do 100K if you sort of manage to go along the coast, um, but you're not normally going to do 100K from Coombe. Whereas uh, Uffington, yes, it's more feasible. Lidington, um, Leckhampton, all those places. So go, go, you know, pick the right site. So let's have a quick look at flyxc.app. Um, I'm just going to switch over. Here we go. So this replaces the old um, uh, the old system that Tom Payne wrote. Um, coming, remember what that was called now? Something .appspot, .appspot .com. Um It's got a few more features actually. It um, when you open, is well, I assume most people have used it, but uh, probably not everyone. When you when you first go in, it's just a, a blank screen zoomed into your your local area uh, you can turn on the airways like that and you you can change the uh, overlay turn on airspace and you can set different heights i guess 6000 is, is a good one to uh, to start with um so just just take some time um looking at that and sort of working out the routes like you know, you can see this uh, this wonderful corridor down from all these sites here, Selsley, Leckhampton, you get people flying down here. Um, that's Lidington, Uffington, Coombe Gibbet. Um, so yeah, they, you know, this is likely to be one of your first cross countries. Northwesterly winds are, are generally um, Good air masses, but you can see we've got this uh, mass of 
airspace to negotiate, and it hasn't got any easier with uh, this dropping down to five and a, uh, four and a half thousand feet uh, just earlier this year, the Farnborough TMA. Um, what you may not know is that you can actually drop IGC files onto here. So um, let's look at some flights just because it, as part of your planning, you might want to see what other people have done. So if you're thinking, if you're planning to go big, open up the cross country league, xcleague.com. Um, there's various ways of finding it, but I've got on best flights for last year and um, Alex Coltman, 308 kilometers. So if we go into that flight, you may not know this, but you can download the track log. And then you can just, uh, oops, I didn't mean to open it. Switch back to FlyXC and just drag it on. That's a bit of advertising for Ozone. It's moving windows around. So yeah, now you can, um, you can see Alex's uh, flight path. And it's quite nice, it shows the, the airspace um, along the, the route that he's taken. So he's gone, um, yeah, if you, over, over Cologne, under Bristol CTA. He's then, that's a, uh, we only have to worry about the red ones, class D, I think, Highgrove House, yeah, we can fly over that. Um, yeah, so just have a, have a bit of fun sort of uh, examining how other people have done their flights. Like he's got, um, he's done some good, good flying here, getting very close to um, To here. Um, this just shows that you know you've got to be uh, have your instruments you've got to be able to zoom in at the right time zoom out to get the bigger picture but uh, at times yeah if you zoom in you can really um, uh, squeak past airspace and so um, the other thing you can do with this you can you can drag multiple flights on on here I mean, we could uh, uh, look at other flights from the same day from the same site and um, drop them on as well. And then you can uh, scroll through and see that, you know, the whole squadron all moving together, as it were. The other thing you can do on FlyXC, which I only discovered uh, recently, it seems a little bit buggy or maybe it's my computer, I don't know, but you can actually put it into, uh, into 3D mode. And I'm not sure how well this is gonna, gonna display for you, for everyone. Um, so here he is taking off at Mir. Climbing out and you can zoom in, you can swivel around, change the speed. But every now and then it sort of seems to hang on me. Um, I don't know if that's just running out of memory or something. But it's a bit of fun. We can jump towards his landing. Let's just watch the last little bit. After eight and a half hours in the air, I think this is. Ah, oh no, is it frozen here? Yeah. No, it's not, it's going okay. So too bad Alex didn't make it to the coast for an ice cream, but um, it, was, it was a pretty epic flight. So that's um, Fly XC and you can plan triangles with it. 
Um, look, I'm just. Oh, this is one of the problems I've had. It doesn't seem to go back to the actual screen, the home screen. There we go. Yeah, so triangle flying, yeah, I've shown you, um, let's put the airspace on. Um, so, and let's put the tracks on again. So Westbury, if we wanted to plan a triangle from Westbury, uh, you click the ruler. <clears throat> and then you just sort of drag the points out. And then I think you can get it to somewhere. I'll just move the screen around. Yeah, closed flight over on the left. Yeah, and that's just joined up, so we can actually just double click on that to get rid of that point there. So there, we've got a nice little FAI, 61K. Um, you can download it straight, well, not straight to your instrument, but uh, indirectly to in instrument format geo seems to be the uh, the most universal one download and then you can just um, send that file to your phone use telegram this is a pretty good way of doing it um, i have a transfer channel so i'll just drag it into there send it and then open it up on my phone and click on it and then it will load it into fly sky high um, i guess it's you know it will be slightly different with uh, xe track depending on what app you use so yeah fly uh, this fly xe app it's uh, yeah really good tool um, anything else of note to show here Tim, I think you missed those uh, comments. People are asking about what the arcs are that come up. Oh, sorry, I have missed them. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah, so these um, uh, red, blue, and green arcs uh, define, as long as your waypoints are in an arc, then um, it's what's known as an FAI triangle, which means that the uh, it's a special type of triangle where the shortest side is no less than 28% of the total length, I think. So if, the, if you did a triangle like that, that's not an FAI triangle. I mean, at the end of the day, it doesn't really, the only, the only difference it makes is for scoring points um, for the XC League. With, with, in the XC League, different types of uh, flights get different multi points multipliers. Um, so when people refer to, oh, I did a fantastic FAI, they're talking about an FAI triangle, and it, what it means is that no, no one side is less than 28% of the total length. So you can, you, can, you can move it around to, you know, to think of a good spot. Like if I was flying here, well, let's just put a if I was trying to do this, which I actually had a nice flight like this the other uh, back in the summer. Oh yes, it's not. I was going to say it's not showing the airspace over Bath, but it was only set to a thousand feet. Yeah, you might want to just sort of, you know you'd look at that and think, oh, okay, I don't want my turn point actually under. Um, why is it not? Normally, when you click, it's. Uh, it shows you what the airspace is. I don't know why it's not. But anyway, you can tweak it to find a good place. Okay, that answers that. Um, let's switch back to the slides. <laughs> 
So uh, we sort of touched on triangles. Um, what about triangles? Well, back when I first did this, um, did this presentation, I've done it a few times now, but not since 2017. And, and the last one was, uh, was to the Southeast Wales Club, in, I think sort of March um, 2017. And sort of at, at that point, really one word, the Blorange, but actually Taliban is equally uh, a great place for, for doing triangles. Uh, Westbury is, is really good. Mir, I did a really nice triangle from Mir early this year. Um, I'm not sure it's a first choice place to go, but it worked really well on that day. Um, Milk Hill, people have done some great triangles from, from, you know, around the Milk Massive really, not specifically Milk. Um, obviously Coombe, people have done. So, you know, we used to think that uh, triangles were the preserve of uh, those lucky enough to live in Scotland. Um, but actually, you can really do a triangle anywhere, more or less. So this is this is a triangle from the from the Blorange uh, that Guy Anderson did uh, a few years ago now. But what a uh, just you know, epic place to do it, just because the scenery is so fantastic. <clears throat> okay, question from Dave Warren. Um, well, I mean, it's basically a lack of wind, isn't it, Dave? Um, if, 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 if it's really light winds, then you've got to be thinking about a triangle. I think it's, uh, you know, specifically, I'd say if it's less than 10 kilometers an hour, then, you know, a triangle will be worth thinking about. Um, Taliban, this is one we did um, for the North South Cup a couple of years ago. Uh, so starting at Taliban here, um, heading out west, past Fan here. Um, I can't remember what, where the turn point exactly was. Then, then back a long way up north, <coughs> it seemed, and then um, back again over over Brecon, uh, and then and then back back to, to uh, within four hundred meters of, of takeoff. <laughs> I, there's a funny story with this one. I, it, it was an epic flight. It was just amazing. Um, but and then we got really low approaching Brecon. I was with about four or five others. Um, and we got this really slow climb that just got better and better as we, you can see in fact on the, on the, the vertical scale here, we're really low over Brecon. Um, and then got up super high again. And then yes, we, it was gonna be in the bag. It was a bit of a sinky glide here onto the hills. And then I was so focused on looking at my instrument um, as I was sort of contouring around the, the bowl, one of the bowls, literally just before uh, the cylinder, that I, <laughs> you know, I, I just bumped on the ground. And oftentimes that happens, <laughs> you, uh, you uh, are able to just carry on flying, but not on this occasion, <laughs> I, I unceremoniously, did a forward somersault through my lines and uh, ended up in a bit of a heap. Didn't hurt myself at all, just soft, soft heather. But I was just too, I just, I wasn't sure if I was gonna make the cylinder and I was just at the wrong moment, I looked down at the screen and just lost concentration for a split second. Fortunately, um, I was within, that's, yeah, I can't remember what the, yeah, that's right. I didn't, I didn't get the declared goal which would have been nice, but I, I did sort of close the triangle sufficiently for the XC League. Um, but yeah, you just you <laughs> crammed it. Yeah, crash landed, exactly. Um, comment from Dave there, uh, a different day. So yes, um, they are very good fun triangles actually. And um, this year in particular, it's been, you know, people haven't been wanting to catch trains or, or you know, do retrieves. Triangles have been a, a good option. Um, Westbury, yeah, this was one I did earlier this year. Um, out to Mel's, close to, to Bath, and then and then back again. And this is, I had plenty of height when I got back to the hill again, as you can see from that, that screenshot. 
but yeah, that was a that was a really nice fight. And then Mio, this is one uh, fairly recent, first of September. Out to Sherburn, and then almost well towards Blandford, and then back up to Mio. So yeah, think about triangles. Okay, um, so this is all stuff we're still doing pre-season. It's sort of planning routes and uh, uh, learning your instruments and discovering airspace, learning about the airspace. This is a screenshot from a flight earlier this year, and uh, that is a very empty Exeter airport. There were a, a, a whole bunch of planes lined up on one of the bits of tarmac, but basically uh, it was effectively shut down really. So this is a, um, yeah, it's just a rather nice picture. In fact, it, funnily enough, I mean, Exeter is a pretty big airport, um, but we can fly right over the top of it. Um, it's only got a, a small uh, bit of airspace around it, not like Bristol or, or Cardiff. So yeah, familiarize yourself with the airspace. Um, simple air map is um, a good, sort of cramming tool. Um, I've got a sl slide of that in a sec. Uh, yeah, FlyXE app, we've just seen. Understand the letter of agreements um, that exist for various sites. So for example, um, I mean, the Avon Club has got a few letter of agreements with um, Bristol Air Traffic Control for the Bath Gap and for flying at Ubley. Um, accessing Keyville and the, the Westbury concessions. So that information is all on the Avon um, website and there's a, a link there for the Bath Gap, for example. So yeah, make sure you know the protocols for, for opening, for, for requesting them to be opened. And you actually do that via the Southwest Airspace Notification Group on Telegram to request the airspace openings. Um, but don't just go on that group and say, you know, can I have Ubly? Can I fly Ubly, you know, please, without understanding what you've actually got to request, because sometimes they're quite specific. So this is, is a screenshot from of the simple air map. So I mean Ben Friedman. Uh, came up with this idea just as a something you could print out and have all the the salient information um, at hand so it's quite it's quite handy to to actually have but it's it's telling you uh, where the sites are with these little x's um, what height the the airspace is um, if it's underlined it means it's a f airspace that's defined at a flight level so flight level six five as opposed to here, um, which is just at an altitude of uh, 5,500 feet. Um, where do you get these airspace sources? Um, so there's a new one, which I've just discovered, airspace.xcontest.org. Um, you pick the country you want and you can choose uh, whether you want NOTAMs, I think, included with it. Um, and it, you can download in open air, which is the sort of most common format for um, airspace files. And also it, there's some um, sort of compressed binary file format, which if you are an owner of a XE Tracer Max, that's the, the format you need to load up on your device. Um, so you get that from here. The more common place is airspace select.uk. It used to be a Windows app, but it's now just a website, which makes it much more useful. Um, you've got, a, well, I could actually go on it really. That's a great, ooh, go back one. So this is how it appears. You can choose how you want bits of airspace to be dis, uh, classified as ATZs as class D, ILS feathers. Um, you could either have it as the ATZ or as class G. Uh, do you want to see uh, unlicensed airfields? You could exclude them if you wanted. Um, 
oftentimes in the app that you're using, you can you can exclude these things if you, if you don't want to see them. So sometimes it's better to sort of have them all in the airspace file so that you can turn them on or off in the app. Um, I, well, Fly Sky High, um, for those of you that use that app, um, I tend to, if I remember, give, actually, I, I, uh, I'm trying to remember. In the past, I've, I've sent an airspace file to Rene for him to incorporate in the app, but now it's as a, as a website here. I think he, I think Rene uh, just downloads it himself periodically and updates Fly Sky High. But with Fly Sky High, you can override the default uh, airspace and you know, have your own file if you want. So I, I personally, I quite like to see some of these uh, other bits of uh, airspace that you don't actually need to sort of see because you don't have to avoid them, like ILS feathers. Where they're quite useful. They're the bits that, let's just have a look on uh, FlyXC. Space. You said that triangle. Um, oops, sorry. So, for instance, um, yeah, let's look down at Exeter where we were looking before. You can see these uh, sort of thin wedges coming out of the airspace. So, those are the what's known as the ILS feathers, the instrument landing system feathers. But what it means for us is that, um, you know, we want to go through these as quickly as possible because this is where the, you know, depending on the, which runways in use, aircraft will be uh, taken off or landing from in, in these directions. So um, it just gives us a heads up that we need to sort of watch out for, you know, be extra vigilant on those, on those, um, as we you know, pass those bits of airspace. Uh, again, here, um, West Coast, no, that's not the airspace. Yeah, Yeovil, um, ATZ. Yeah, so that's, that's not Yeovil Ton, that's, uh, this is, uh, is it Westland or Augusta, the, the airfield they use? Um, so again, there. And there's various other ones, obviously Gloucester Airport here has got them as well. So it just gives you a, a little heads up. Also, I mean, I tend to show these on mine, have these little micro light things and gliding sites all, all showing on Fly Sky High, just so it gives you, you know, a little heads up, there might be more traffic around there. Um, oh yeah, we, we were looking at that. Anyway, uh, sorry, flipping around a lot. Uh, where are we? Yes, select. So yeah, set these how you want. Um, here we've got uh, the local uh, the letter of agreements. So Halesland, we can we can see um, the Hales and gliding blocks. Westbury concessions are on there. So if you tick that, you'll get the little detailed um, uh, the four four little areas we can um, go into at Westbury with permission, Bath Gap, Doncaster, that's um, that's one of the ones that you have to worry about if you're going, if you're flying from um, Stanage, I think it is, and places like that, Russia in, up in the, in the Dales, Ubley as well. So you wanna, you wanna have those ticked. Uh, question from Dave, uh, if I understand it correctly, it's not restricted airspace but you will want to be aware of approaching aircraft. Yeah, that's uh, hopefully what I said. Yeah. Um, right. Oh yeah, and then you just click download. And it's a, just a text file. Which you just, again, transfer via telegram or email or whatever you want to do to your device and then you can click on it and load it up. So it's all super easy. Right. Yeah, instruments. This is actually a bit of an old photo from uh, 2015. Um, 
And if you look carefully, you'll be able to work out it's my flight, my 220k flight. And I'm just at the moment going past uh, or approaching Lake and Heath. There's a couple of big air bases there. Um, Fly Sky High has had some new features added to it, and there's a sideways view, um, which would easily show that I was above this, uh, this air, airspace here, this uh, control area. CTA or CTZ, I get confused. Um, so yeah, and that was in the days when I used the Flymaster as well. So yeah, there's various apps. I've mentioned Fly Sky High, that's what I use. Um, most people who've got Android phones tend to use XC Track, um, which is very good. Some, I think you can get, uh, yeah, XC Saw, I think you can also get on Android as well. But people who've got Kobos tend to use, I think, I think I'm right in saying XC Saw is the only thing that runs on Kobos. Well, LK8000 is, a, I think, a sort of derivative of XCSAW. I think I'm right in saying that. But basically, get your instruments, learn how to use them, have a play around with them, setting, setting routes, um, you know, importing routes, importing airspace, and do all that sort of now so that you're not worrying about how to do it um, when the season comes. Although you probably will forget how to use them, given that uh, it's a few months away. Thanks, Jeff. Right, so yeah, this is what you see on Fly Sky High. If you, if you tap on an airspace when you're flying, it brings up a bit of information about it, tells you the heights. Um, and as you saw with Alex's track, he went very close up to airspace and here's, here's one of mine. Um, uh, this is actually Redlands, which doesn't exist anymore, but uh, this is on a North South Cup day. Um, and you can get very close to it. Um, it's brilliant. So make sure you know how to use that. Brian, sadly, that compass is now residing on a Swiss mountainside. <laughs> it fell off. Um, yeah, it, I got it from Robin Brown years and years ago, and I've never been able to, I haven't been able to find another one quite like it. But yes, it was a very good one. So, RASP and weather. Now, this warrants a whole uh, talk on its, on its own, um, but it's really what most of us use for planning, well, for looking at weather for flying. There are others, there's SkySight. Um, I've never used that. That's a subscription. Um, some people like it. But I've, don't think it's quite as um, as accurate or as good as RAS, but it's a sort of personal thing, really. But uh, RAS has undergone some changes recently um, since the sad death of and someone help me with his name, the guy who um, Weather Jack, yeah, Weather Jack. He he died a couple of years ago, and no one has sort of taken over his website. There's a backup RASP. Um, no, hang on, not, I'm not talking, that. it's not Weather, Weather Jack, it was the other guy. Yeah. Uh, my wife is, no, it's not Rod Buck, Wendy Wind Blows. No, it was, um, oh, I, I sent numerous emails to him over the years. His name escapes me, but he ran the, the RASP uh, website. Uh, Paul Scorer, thanks, Viv. Yeah. Um, he sadly died um, a couple of years ago, and no one knew the password to his server, so it just uh, became defunct. Luckily, there was a backup RASP server called RASP Stratus, um, but it just is not as good. Um, it's not as, it's just not as, uh, the interface isn't so good. So what, luckily, other people have uh, come up with some new websites which basically pull the RASP data from the Stratus website. So this is what's what's known as lazy RASP, which was that link here. 
Um, it's on the Scottish Hang Gliding and Paragliding Federation website. And actually, of course, seeing as, oops, sorry. Seeing as I'm on the web, you're all on the web, we can just have a quick look at that. So you can choose a number of different parameters and um, the guy who runs is Stuart Yarrow. Um, he's very amenable to adding more. So if there's other ones we want, he, he would quite easily add it. Obviously it's all blue at this time of year. Um, what it gives you is a, the ability to have a real quick look ahead to, to pick out the days. Um, we're more interested in just wind at the moment. Okay, Viv. Yeah, you can do the uh, you can do a webinar on uh, a Zoom on SkySight when you when you've sussed it out. Yeah, I gather it has got lots of features. Um, you know, you can you can plot a route and get all the weather along a route, um, things like that. So yes, it's it's great for. Um, a quick overview of when the good flyable days are. And we can zoom in and get these, these maps are actually quite detailed even when you zoom in. Um, if you click on them, the link doesn't work anymore. It used to, that's probably a very simple change that Stuart needs to make. He's probably just unaware of it. Um, So that was lazy RAS, but it, that's that's what I tend to look at. Certainly in the in this in the cross country season, I'll just look at that every day and just uh, and see what's coming up. Another really good one is this uh, XC Para, um, and I believe the developer of this Yar Yaroslav is on the call, or is on the Zoom meeting. So thank you very much, Yaroslav. Um, it is a great tool. Let's go and have a quick look at that whilst we're here. So what's really nice about this, it works very well on, on mobile devices. Um, it's it's a, it's a turn, the, turn your phone onto landscape mode and then it's all really nice. So it's it's got lots of information. You can look ahead at the different days. Um, so we're not, we know we're, it's, all, it's all blue for the next few days from looking at uh, lazy rasp, click on wind, and then you can just go through the different days. We've got a run of easterlies and northeasterlies um, for the next few days. Uh, when you when you found a day you like the look of, you can sort of you know look at the times along the top, and you've got all sorts of different parameters here. This time of year, yeah. We're not really expecting to see much in the way of thermal strength. Um, you can get the skew T charts from these uh, balloon symbols. So this is the one at Talgarth. Up pops the zoom, uh, the, the, the skew T or tephagram. Um, and I think if you want to sort of look into that in more detail, yeah, you can open it in a new tab and then sort of zoom in and, and, and take a look. Not going to spend too much time looking at these, although I will we'll have a, a bit more of a look if you want. Um, the other thing that's on on this website, so if you, yeah, if you were to get rid of the SKU-T, you just click anywhere on it on the map that's, that hasn't got a, uh, an icon. You can show the airspace, which is really nice. Uh, you can change to a terrain view. This is a little bit tricky to click on because it's got the Google logo above it, but you can, you can put the, uh, the terrain, Google terrain map on underneath, which is quite nice when you're looking at you know, places in South Wales, for example. Um, if you scroll down, you get a nice uh, synoptic view, so you can get a sort of bigger picture. You know, it's it's all very well seeing what the wind's doing, but it's it's equally important 
to actually understand what's driving the weather, what where the lows and highs are. Um, so, and you can just click through on the top here. So yeah, that's it. So Jeff has just asked a question, is there any site offering a more detailed zoomed in view of the skew T in the lower atmosphere? Um, if there is, I don't know about it. I think, to be honest, I don't think you need much more than this. Um, Because by the time, you, if you do, you know, if you do open up in a new tab and you can zoom in if you want, uh, it's, it's pretty detailed in, the, in this sort of, in the area we're interested in, which is sort of, you know, four to 6,000 feet. It, it, it gives you enough. You can tell you've got the wind direction and speed, cloud cover. X, no, uh, John, XC Para is a, just a website. So it obviously works on anything. So, uh, yeah, the, I think these are the clearest uh, skew T's that I've come across. All right, back to the slides. Okay. That's just a, yeah, so learn how to use RASP and, and how to interpret those, uh, those skew T's because they are, skew T's do tell you uh, an awful lot. Um, the Black Mountains Gliding Club has a, has, has a download which goes into quite some detail. Uh, Thames Valley did a presentation on RASP um, a little while ago. There's a link here. And like I say, I'll, I'll produce a PDF of, of these slides. Um, where all the links will work. Judith Mole did a, a video cast with, I can't remember who the guy was who, 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 who did the presentation, but that was very good. That was more looking at, that was this sort of older um, Paul Scorer RASP version that, he, that they were looking at, but it's, it, it applies equally well to the uh, XC Para version. Kelly Farina has done a bunch of, uh, could have been Mark Riches, yeah, could have, I can't remember. Kelly Farina of um, uh, mastering paragliding fame, and he does a lot of guiding at Bassano and Griffenberg, and he used to do it in Mayhofen as well. He's done some weather videos, understanding skew tees. You can find his channel here. Um, but yeah. Look at it in conjunction with other forecasts so you, so you get the picture, the bigger picture. I, I tend to like looking at the BBC weather for the week ahead uh, on the iPlayer. Uh, that gets updated sort of like one or two o'clock every morning. So by the time you wake up, you can look at that and uh, get a feel for, you know, what's happening in sort of big, big picture wise in a, in a friendly format. So that's all the sort of pre-season stuff to get your head around and, you know, that'll keep you going for, for a little bit. How do you pick the day? Well, we sort of touched on that with the lazy rasp, really. Um, you know, all, all your usual weather sources. Actually, weather is, is good for quick overview, rasp. As I said, the BBC video, synoptic charts, windy is quite nice. And I'll have a look at that in a minute. On my blog, I've got some, I've got a link to all the weathers, with, uh, all the forecasts that I tend to use. RASP is generally considered to be the best because it, it does take into account sort of local, uh, much more sort of local micro uh, terrain conditions. And um, it often gets, for instance, those of you who've flown, um, or attempted to fly, should we say, you know, places like North Devon um, and also the, the South Devon coast at places like, or Dorset, like Eep and Beer, oftentimes they are, you think there should be a decent wind or the wind should be from the right direction, but local effects 
come into play here and often means that it's not as flyable as you think it should be. And RAS does actually tend to get those, get those right, whereas I don't think many other forecasting tools do. <clears throat> okay, so here's a quite interesting tephigram from Lark Hill, so the middle of Salisbury Plain. Um, early in March, and what often happens in March, April times is you get really unstable days, you know, the, on the face of it, they look, you know, you know, rash, if you go to rash, there's lots of oranges and, and reds, looking like a really good thermic day. But uh, then you, if you dive into it a bit deeper, look at a skew T, and you'll see, um, well, it's telling you an awful lot of information here, but um, where the dotted line branches from the um, uh, the dry adiabatic lapse rate. Uh, no, I'm getting that wrong. Just the lapse rate for the day. Where it splits off here, that, that tells you where um, cloud base is going to be. So you, you move across horizontally so you can see it, 4,000 feet. But this dotted line, this means that a parcel there that, um, that arrives here will just keep on going up, cooling at the saturated lapse, lapse rate. Oh, that was nice until, it, uh, until it hits here. So it will go up to about 20,000 feet on, on this day. So you get basically you get massive, big, you know, massive towering cumulus on this day. So it's not necessarily uh, such a great day for us. Oftentimes, not every cloud is that big. In fact, it's rarely, you know, you wouldn't get just hundreds of these. <laughs> not every cumulus is, a, is, is going to be towering, but it means there will be some big ones around. Um, apart from the fact that the wind is 40 knots on this day, um, which precludes it from, from us flying anyway. So a much better tephigram would be this one here, Sunday the 7th of June, 2015. And uh, you can see here, this is at uh, midday. So it's not super, not exactly terribly high cloud base at midday, it's only about three and a half thousand feet. But um, uh, if we clicked on, we could have seen it go up as the day progresses. Um, but what it's showing here is that uh, yeah, cloud base about three and a half at this this point of time, but it only will run, the top of the clouds are gonna be sort of five and a half thousand feet. So we haven't got massive vertical developments. We just got nice, you know, nice clouds. Um, and we've got light northerly winds. And as happened, this was, I think, and I don't know if this day has been beaten yet, but it was the day at the time that more kilometers had been flown, you know, more kilometers were flown on that day than any other day in the history of the league. Um, I, yeah, I have no idea if it's been beaten since then, but it was a, it was a great day. Guys flew from, um, uh, it wasn't Langoffin, it's was the Lawley or somewhere like that up in Shropshire or um, all the way down to Dorchester. Um, I, I flew from Leckhampton down to Weymouth that day. It was, yeah, cracking day. Um, so yeah, learn how to interpret these, these uh, tephigrams. They are, they do give you a lot of information. We'll just in fact go, no, this previous one. On the left-hand side here, you sometimes see little bars coming out and, tell, and that's, that, that's on this scale here between naught and 100%, naught and one is, is how much cloud cover there's going to be. So if, if there's a band, if, if there's a green line that sort of extends out to, to one, it means you've got 100% cloud cover. So uh, yeah, I just discovered this on Windy the other day. You, uh, you can sort of plot a route on Windy and it will, it will show you the, the weather. Um, along those along that line as the, as the day progresses um, let's see if we can actually see if I can remember how to do that I as I say I've never actually done this in anger yet so 
So zoom into the area. Um, uh, just gonna move things around. Where was it? Distance and planning. Go on. I've got this thing popping up. Oh well, doesn't really matter. One click, two click, three. Yeah. So you can then choose what you want to see here. Um, VFR was quite quite nice, um, and you can change your speed. So you think it's what? Well, what's the distance of this? Uh, yes. It's going to take you a long time. Average, average, you can set your average speed here, and then it will. It will. Um, and you can click along here. So we'll say we're going to do this amazing flight on Saturday. It's going to. Yeah, <laughs> going to start at twelve, finish it at uh, eleven o'clock. So maybe we're going to be starting a bit earlier than that, and flying a bit faster. You can see it shortening up here. So that that's feasible. Eight hours in the air. And it will show you um, all along here, along the route, um, what sort of clouds you can expect. Um, cloud tops, cloud base you've got on the axis here. So as I say, I've only just discovered this, but it looks like it could be quite a good tool. It's obviously got the wind direction at altitudes. Um, trying to, I'm struggling to sort of see what altitudes these are. Yeah, I think, I think quite understand. It's showing an easterly wind, assuming that is for this time. But yet here, these arrows are showing. No, yeah, they must point into the wind. Do they? Can anyone confirm that? They must. They must do. Otherwise, it's completely wrong. Um, the airgram, yes, Matt was asking that. Yeah, so it shows the, the wind speed and temperatures at different heights. So yeah, the, these must be like a, must be like a weather vane. Although that's weird because on the, uh, on the um, tephigrams, they point from the where where the wind is coming. Let's switch back to here. Yeah, down here. This day was definitely northerly winds, and this is show, these arrows are sort of coming from the north. It's not like a weather vane. If it was, it would imply that it's southerly winds. So. Might need to just check that out. Tim, you can set which direction they mean under more options on the left. Ooh, I'm glad someone knows this stuff. Wind blast. Not sure that's making any difference. I don't know, have a play with, around with it. Yeah, you could be right, Rob. Let's move swiftly on. Okay. How's everyone doing for, anyone want a little, Five minute break to make a coffee, get a drink, or should we just press on? <laughs> Little break, please, happy to crack on. So that's 50-50. Uh, Let's have a five minute break. Well, I those that want to just have a, uh, have a little break, just go, I'll, I'll, less than five minutes, a one minute, a one minute comfort break. While we try and get to this, uh, get to the bottom of this. Nick says you treat the barbs like quills on an arrow. Tim, get another beer. 
I've already, I've still got one. Let's just go back to Windy and have a look at that. <laughs> Comfort breaks in fight. That's, uh, yeah, interesting discussion topic. Okay, that's good, Jeff. Um, let's just have a quick look at that again. Uh, distance and planning. Put it onto airgram. Let's do it at some sensible time. I mean, to me, I would interpret this as saying the winds are Well, maybe they are. Right down low, maybe they are coming from the northeast. We can move this surface height here. So here they're showing it's coming from the southeast. Yeah, so that is showing. Yeah, yeah. So. It's where the wind is coming from. Yeah, higher. Yeah, very much southwest, which is what we're seeing here. Wind goes from barb to point. Yeah, it's it's clear that the it's it just looks really weird in this because the upper wind is so different. It's 180 degrees different to the lower wind. Um, so that. It's difficult to see what the arrows are doing low down here. Good, I'm glad we've answered that one. Thanks, Nick. Right, we're gonna press on. Everyone's back from the comfort break, I hope. So yeah, picking the day, we've looked at the weather. So you'll see what the wind's gonna be. It's northwesterly, so then you'd you're looking at your sight roses and you've, you've sussed out that you wanna do 100K, so you, you then all, rock up at Selsley or, or Froster or, or somewhere like that. Um, so, yeah, just practice, um, you know, have a look at the, the weather the next few days or over, over the winter, see what the wind's doing, just pretend it's a really nice day and, and work out where you'd likely go and what sort of route you'd do. If you're um, not retired or flexible with your work, start thinking about planning that sickie. Um, check airspace, uh, you know, you can in advance ask whether it, uh, whether we'll be able to, um, open these, uh, you know, airspace concessions. Some of them, um, you ha definitely have to ask in advance. Um, am I right in saying that? Yes, certainly. <clears throat> the Westbury concessions have to be asked in advance at the weekend. Um, Bath Gap and Ubley, you only ask on the day, but they're all ex that's all explained on the Avon website. Uh, check NOTAMs from NOTAM, notaminfo.com. See what's, if there's any uh, bits of airspace you need to avoid on the day. Uh, have a think about, you know, the flight you're going to do, do you want to actually declare a goal? Um, these days, actually, on the subject of de declaring goals, most, well, a lot of instruments now <clears throat> let you declare a goal, actually, um, as part of the, you know, on your instrument, you just do on your instrument. There's no requirement to uh, email or text the, the coordinates into the XC League. So that makes life a lot easier. Um, you can change it up until you take off. 
I guess I guess if you wanted to change it and you had already taken off, you'd have to land again and then uh, stop that flight and have a, another flight. Um, just start chatting to your mates. Who's up for it? Um, you know, you don't want to think, you don't want to discover that you're, you're going to be the only one at this site because you've forgotten something crucial about the site that, you know, you, you can't fly it on the weekends, for example. And there are sites like that, only flyable midweek or, or vice versa. Okay, Seth has asked, expl please explain what you mean by declaring your goal on the instruments. Um, and Brian Greenwell has also asked that. Um, <clears throat> excuse me. Yes, you, well, I, I'm only um, familiar with Fly Sky High, but yes, in Fly Sky High, you can, you just set your route um, and then you can declare it. Now, the route, there's different types of declared flights. A triangle, you obviously need a start and then two turn points and then an end. So you need four, four, four turn points with the start and the end have got to be identical. Um, a normal declared um, open XC, um, you, you normally would just have a start and a declared goal. Now with Fly Sky High, you can have intermediate uh, waypoints. For instance, you might want to set one around some airspace that you've got to avoid, um, but you can set that waypoint as being um, for information only so that it doesn't actually get added to the declared task. But basically what it means is that in, your, in the IGC file that the instrument produces, um, that task is specified in it so that you can, you know, when it gets uploaded, you can see whether you've, uh, uh, you know, the, the league will, will examine it and see whether you've um, achieved your declared task or not. Does that answer your questions? I think other, certainly other instruments can do it. I, I imagine XC track is the same. Um, and I think newer fly masters can do it. And I'm sure the UD can do it as well. Um, right. And you get extra points for achieving a goal. You do. Um, Nick Lloyd just asked that. So yeah, you get, I'm not, I'm not sure what the multipliers are. Um, it's sort of 25% extra or something like that. I think on a declared goal. I, to be honest, I, I haven't done the league for a couple of years. Um, uh, so I've, I'm a bit out of touch with it, but I, I do still, set declared goals just it sort of helps with navigation even if you don't actually you know you're not uh, <laughs> extra ice cream even if you're not doing it for points um it's it's always it's helpful to have it to give you an idea of um what you're heading for rather than just sort of randomly drifting off downwind it means it means really that you've you've thought about the, the flight beforehand and you, you, you said, right, well, I'm going to set a goal 150 kilometers away. <clears throat> and, um, you know, on RASP, you'll click through and see what the wind's doing hour by hour. And you can sort of draw a, a route. I forgot to say, actually, on, on the XC Para, there is a route planning uh, functionality as well. So you can add, as you, as you click on sort of hour by hour, you can add extra waypoints. So you're following the, the, uh, the wind, the, you know, the, the, the wind direction correctly. So you can have a pretty good estimate of where, where your goal is, is, where's a sensible place to put your goal. So what that means is, you know, you really, you've definitely thought about the day you've, um, uh, rather than just sort of turning up and just wafting off down, downwind. Of course, you can have brilliant flights doing that. I don't think Alex ever declares flights, but he just always flies. Alex Coltman, this is, he'll, he'll regularly fly 200 kilometers. So yeah, um, Jonathan, hello. Uh, yes, it is being recorded. Right, so yeah, 
work out who you're going to go with, make sure you all agree on the plan. Uh, so yeah, don't just leave it until the morning. Um, because by that stage, you'll, you'll probably be too late. Your mates will have gone at seven o'clock or eight o'clock and you'll be end up having to drive to the hill on your own and just all the extra hassle. Matt Burton says, he can't hear me. Can anyone else hear me? Just a few people say yes, if you can hear me. Yeah, thanks. Yes, can hear you fine, Tim. Yeah, so I don't know what's up with Matt's, um, Matt's feed his internet or whatever. Um, right. Uh, oh yeah, one little tip is that just before the clocks go uh, forward in March, um, it's worthwhile, you know, so sort of mid-March onwards or March until, until the clocks go forward at the end of March, um, it's worth being on the hill a little bit earlier. Um, just because um, you know, normally you'd want to be on the hill at half 10, 11 ish, typically. Um, but obviously, you know, that's in summertime. But just before the clocks go forward, you know, that's effectively an hour earlier. Um, so sort of half nine, half 10, really. So you need to, you need to get there a little bit earlier in, in March, I would say. Oops, all right. <laughs> okay, uh, the, so the day, well, the night before, really. Um, uh, this is pretty obvious, really. Just, just make sure everything's charged up. Um, I mean, I think a lot of people, certainly I do, uh, you know, I charge stuff up after a flight rather than before a flight. So once I've, once I've landed, yeah, once I'm back home that evening, I'll just plug everything in to recharge and sort of do it then rather than rather than in a in a panic the day the day before. Um, I've just noticed some weird green lines on my screen. I've, I don't know how I can get rid of them. Annotate. Clear. Clear all drawings. Yay! <clears throat> I learn something every day. Um, yeah, charge everything up. Uh, just get some, make sure you've got a bit of food for during the flight. Um, you know, it's nice to have eat something every hour or so just to keep the energy levels up. This is always assuming <laughs> you have a nice long flight, but keeping yourself alert by eating food is does help. Um, yeah, get your camel back out and give it a clean if necessary. Buy a new one. Mine's in a pretty bad state at the moment, actually. It's just, it's just the usual stuff, you know. It's handy to have a bit of bog paper with you. Find your sunglasses, sun cream. I mean, I just keep everything together all the time. I don't ever take stuff out. I've got all my, you know, I could, I could. Someone could say, right, we're going cross country flying tomorrow morning at eight o'clock, and I'd be, I'd be ready um, in half an hour. So it's just worth being super prepared. Uh, make sure you've got a bit of cash or oh, well, these days actually everyone everywhere is contactless. You don't need cash with you. I don't think I've taken any cash with me or taken my wallet with me on any cross country this year. So that makes life a lot easier. <clears throat> but I do know someone who had, they always kept about a hundred quids worth of cash um, stashed away with them. They were somewhere it was in their flying kit, and they just they just had a hundred hundred quid of cash with them at all times for for emergencies. Probably quite sensible, really. Chris Ashdown. Yes, preparation. Get your XCP tube ready, or your. I have no idea what a Tina lady is. <laughs> Would you care to elaborate, Chris? Personally, I don't use XCPs. The only time I've tried one, well, not, not that brand. Um, uh, it was a bit of a disaster. <laughs> it was on a Volbooth trip a couple of years ago in France. And, uh, <laughs> and uh, yeah, we had, first thing I did after landing was going for a swim. Let's just leave it like that. Um, 
work out what sort of clothing you need, how, what's the temperature going to be like at cloud base. And uh, you can tell that from these, from the old tephogram again. So you work, you look at the, um, you work out where cloud base is from the, where the purple dash line sort of splits from the lapse rate. And then you've, you draw a line parallel to these orange lines down to the scale here. And this will tell you on this day, um, at cloud base at like two and a half thousand feet, um, temperature is about minus three. So quite, quite chilly. Um, <clears throat> so yeah, worth knowing. If cloud base was higher, or if you, no, this is saying if you actually went up in cloud, a little bit to say 4,000 feet, uh, it would be minus five. So your lines would probably start, start freezing, <laughs> which I've had happen before. Um, so yeah, study the air map for your potential route. Um, just, just make sure you're familiar with how the airspace um, looks on your instrument. And also be prepared that if you do fly further than your goal, you know, what, what can you expect beyond it? Uh, rather than just go sort of blind, um, make sure you understand what is, is beyond it in terms of airspace. Finally, um, yeah, get a, get a good rest. So obviously the more you do the night before, the less rushed you'll be in the morning. Pretty obvious. <clears throat> okay, the final, just a few final things to do in the morning. Um, you know, obviously you're gonna check the forecast again and just, um, you know, has it changed significantly since, since, you know, last night's runs? If it has, then, you know, what's, what's causing that? Um, look at the actuals, i.e. use sort of XC weather to, to see what's actually happening on the ground versus the forecast um, and sort of, have a chat with your mates as to what you know what you think's going on, what's happening. SAT 24 is is pretty good for looking at cloud cover. Um, you might wake up and it's oh, it's really cloudy, it's overcast. Um, hop on SAT 24 and see if there's a you know a clear, you know, if it's like a front that's going through and maybe it's just a little bit delayed going through, stuff like that. Um, so I think it was Sue at Dunstable, I can't remember. Um, sorry, Dunstable, I can't remember your name. Um, do you need to carry a proper air map? I don't think you do. I don't think, maybe a few people actually carry one in the back of the rucksack, but um, I don't, it may, it, you may be required to, but no one actually does. I hope that answers your questions. Your, your question. Um, yeah, so on the morning, um check with your friends that everyone's still up for it um, um yeah that's it really get your food together number of times i've left a sandwich sitting in the fridge having carefully made it the, the day before it's really annoying um and just final kit check really but you should have sort of done that the night before really don't drink too much coffee. Okay, now we're getting there. You arrived at the site and this is a busy um, golden ball on the on a day of the uh, North South Cup when we had a, a task to um, Peterborough, I think. <coughs> Oh, Seb says the previous picture <laughs> was right over his house. Ah, nice. Um, so this is, uh, yeah, a nice, a, a cracking looking day at Golden Ball. So when you're at the site, um, yeah, declare a goal if you haven't done so already. Open the airspace, having worked out what you need to do to get it open. Give a site report on Telegram, let other people know if it's uh, worth coming out, um, you know, if it's a good forecast, then it's, 
you know, people like to be there, but it's always nice to, for people to know what's going on. Don't stand around sort of chatting, um, you know, get your kit out first and then, and then do all this sort of socialising, get yourself ready. Um, you know, I'm sure we've all been on a hill and maybe you haven't been ready and someone's taken off and they've climbed out and it's sort of been the only decent thermal for the next hour or two. Um, so yeah, get yourself ready, uh, eat a bit of food maybe, uh, but just, you know, don't do too much standing around chatting unless it's clearly not flyable, obviously. Um, but if, it's, if it is light, just get yourself clipped in and be totally ready to go. If you see a bird thermaling out in front, you know, if, you've, if you haven't clipped, if you're not already clipped in, you're going to be too late. And uh, that can make the difference between, you know, having an excellent flight or just not leaving the hill at all. You know, so this, that's more important on, on, on light wind days, obviously. Um, if you do, you know, go down, just don't worry about it. Just get up as quickly as possible and uh, get ready again. So yeah, positive thinking. Once you're in the air, I suppose the thing to do is just be prepared to change your plans. Don't, don't blindly push on. So you, you've set your goal, but uh, the wind is, uh, you know, downwind is 20 degrees off your goal maybe you know just 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 go with it don't don't get fixated on a goal um it's not it's not it's there's more than just the tesco points and here's a flight that i started off heading north from malvern and ended up doing a sort of 180 degree turn and ending up land down near abergavenny um just because i can't remember I think it just it was quite light winds to start with, and then it, there was um, yeah, much more pronounced sort of winds um, in the afternoon than than we had expected. And there was I don't oh, that's right. I think we were trying to get back to Malvern. That's yeah, out and return clearly. But um, it was quite obvious that <clears throat> that the um, the east or north east northeasterly wind was was too strong to get back so just just go with it just go downwind and you get a nice 100k flight in <clears throat> um yeah the other thing is just keep you know if it's looking desperate um keep positive and just try and do everything you can to stay in the air for another half an hour um just you know go into mince mode and just take every little bit of, you know, tiny lift you can get. Um, you know, if there's a massive big blue hole in front of you, maybe don't go sort of charging across, just sort of loiter where you are as best you can. Um, and, you know, we've all, we've all landed under a blue hole. And as we start packing up, it all starts, you know, the clouds appear again. Um, and you're just kicking yourself as all your mates fly overhead. So yeah, just learn to sort of pace yourself. And sort of avoid pub suck, I suppose, is, uh, you know, it can be tempting to think, oh, well, I can see a pub down there or, you know, well, I know there's a railway station or something. Uh, it's just land and have an easy life. But, you know, there may be an hour's flying left in the day. You can do another 30K. And sort of, yeah. Don't worry too much about how you're going to get back. Yes, clearly it's nice to, to land by a railway station. That's why, you know, setting a goal, it sort of makes sense to set a goal by a, a railway station. But, you know, if, if you don't make it or um, if, you, if you've got a choice of, um, if you're getting low, but you think, oh, there's, I could either follow the road and maybe I'll get something or, if I go off at 45 degrees, there's a combine harvester, um, you know, and there's a plume of dust coming up from it. So I go for that. I might not get it. You know, don't give, don't worry about, you know, a little walk. Um, 
go go for that go for that thermal um, if you think there's one there. That's what I'm saying. And so don't don't and don't worry about how you're going to get back. It's always good fun. Enjoy yourself. That's what it's all about. Um, okay, quick little bit on retrieves. And this is something you can sort of uh, start getting, you, know, you, can, you can sort out this time of year what apps to get, get some apps which have got OS maps on them. Um, I use, uh, oh God, that's out, I haven't updated that one. I use View Ranger, um, which is very good. Um, Android, there's various apps, but the best, the best maps to have when you land out are undoubtedly OS maps. Um, because you just get a real feel for the for the terrain around you, especially if you've got them downloaded on your phone. Um, you don't need any internet, obviously, to to pull them up. Um, learn how to use the XU Retrieve system. Um, there's a, a test group for playing around in. Um, I've done a YouTube video uh, explaining how it works. So yeah, familiarize yourself with that again. It'll save, it'll save me endlessly posting in uh, the retrieve group saying map, uh, pin first, then map message, you know, because invariably people do it the other way around. Um, again, on the subject of XC retrieve, set your Telegram username and register your spot or in reach and, and live track 24. Um, if we want, at some point nearer the start of the season, I'm quite happy to do a, a, a session on the XU Retrieve system. Might be useful as a sort of pre-season refresher. Um, yeah, don't worry about that. Um, carry um, some A4 paper and a marker pen with you. Um, I've got, actually got a laminated bit of A4 and a marker pen. Um, it's, that's pretty handy for when you're hitching um just so people are more likely to stop and give you a lift if they know where you're trying to get to i always find um and yeah a glider pilot sign is uh, is pretty handy too the ones that sort of go onto the that you attach to your to your rucksack when you're hitching try and um you know make yourself look a bit less intimidating take your sunglasses off if you've got a you know, a hat on, maybe take it off um, so they can see your face and and smile, even though when the, it's the sort of 50th car that's gone past without stopping. Put a brave face on, smile. You can be cu cursing them under your breath, but uh, yeah, try and, try and look friendly. And, but sometimes you just have to walk. This is a 11 mile hike out I did in Scotland in the days before I had lightweight kit. And that was, that was quite something. Once I'd accepted my fate and finished swearing at landing in the middle of nowhere, um, you know, just try and see the positive side of it. And it, it, there really was a positive side. It was just a beautiful, beautiful walk. And I've, I've made a video of it, um, which you can, you can find on YouTube. But yeah, it's not the end of the world if you have to walk out. Um, so finally, you know, you've got back home. Don't, don't, don't worry about it that day, but then over the next day or two, maybe compare tracks with, with other people um, who maybe flew different routes and try and work out what they, what they did and you didn't if you, if you landed and they managed to carry on. I mean, obviously luck plays a huge part in it, but, but the good pilots tend to make their own luck. So yeah, put your... Um, GPS dump, I forgot to update that. That's a bit irrelevant really these days. Have a look at it in Google Earth um, with other people's tracks or on flyxc.app. Um, obviously upload to XC League or I use X Contest now. It's just nice to have a record. Uh, X Contest is, is very nice actually because you can see if, if more people used X Contest, um, it's got this really nice feature where you can see your buddies, you know, uh, 
other people's flights from the same site on the same day and you can just tick them tick the boxes and then you get everyone's track logs on the same uh, on the same map so it makes it very very easy to compare and you can sort of see where people have um, uh, done different things so just we can have a, a very quick look at that on I do actually have it on one of these this is not in the UK actually <laughs> This is a flight that Damien Lacaz and uh, Maxime Pinot did last year. No, three years ago. But anyway, just so you can, um, underneath someone's flight, you get these air buddies and you can just tick on them here. And then you, you see both persons, both pilots track logs superimposed. Um, and it's, it's interesting, they just, you can see by the, the, um, uh, altitude profile that they just stuck together like um, like a pair of gloves. And that is the way you do almost 300K by sticking together. Anyway, so the, yeah, that's X contest. And it's, uh, it's the shame that more British pilots don't use it. Um, David Thomas, is that Dave Thomas that I know? I don't think it is because he's just bought a flam. Um, how essential is it to have a fla flam during XC? Um, it's, it's not essential at all. No, I mean, we've all done perfectly well without flams for many, many years. Um, but it's quite nice to have. It's a bit, it's sort of reassuring that um, sailplanes are less likely to come <laughs> plowing into you at cloud base. Because uh, sailplanes, I mean, that you basically have to identify your the biggest risk areas. And for me, it's you know sailplanes. If I'm going to have a well, sailplanes and maybe other other paraglide pilots, I suppose. But um, sailplanes, yeah, they they keep a, a a pretty good eye out. But it'd be pretty easy for them to just be looking at their instruments and suddenly you know they're flying 100 knots suddenly they're right next to you um whereas if you've got flam then they will most most sailplane pilots have flam in this country and certainly in the alps i think it's uh, by law they have to or in certain countries in the alps they have to so yeah it's just that gives you that bit of reassurance that um, you're not going to have a sailplane fly up your backside at 100 knots um so yeah, given as the, the CAA are doing the rebate at the moment, um, it's a good time to, if you are thinking about flying, it's a good time to get one. So yeah, just um, going back to the slide, um, compare your track logs, uh, just try and work out, you know, what were the good decisions you made? Did you make a bad decision? Like, you know, did I, did I just go blindly across that blue hole, hoping for the best? Um, you know, why, why didn't I stop there? That's, I think that's the, probably the biggest mistake people make is, is not knowing when to change, change gear when they're flying across countries. Chat with your mates, um, just try and learn from it. <laughs> Darren's iPad to everyone, sorry. And Tim, where can we buy a flam device from? Yeah, if you, if you want a, uh, a flam device, drop me a message. Um, you can get uh, on Telegram basically. It's the easiest way, at Tim Pentreath on Telegram, and I'll give you a good price. Um, learn from your mistakes. Don't, don't beat yourself up too much if you bomb out. You know, it's not the end of the world. The best pilots will always bomb out. I mean, everyone's done it. Um, I've done it. Um, I'm sure Alex Coltman has bombed out on numerous occasions. We, we all have. It's, it's inevitable. So just don't, don't, get, don't beat yourself up about it. Just try and learn from your mistakes. So a little summary of what we've talked about. Preseason, I mean now, goals, routes, airspace instruments, etc. In the week before, you're looking at lazy rasp to get an idea of when the good days are. Have a think about what sites you're going to go to. The day and the evening before. Chat with your mates about where you're going to go. Um, 
get your kit sorted, batch everything, you know, everything charged up. Uh, morning, the same thing, weather check, confirm site and make sure you don't leave your helmet behind or stupid things like that. On the site, focus and get ready and positive thinking. You know, even if the day doesn't look that good, um, oftentimes you can still have a really good, good day, even if it's, you know, not quite as good as forecast. Um, during the flight, just, yeah, have fun, really. Debrief. So um, just thinking, just wrapping this up, in 2020, I, did, I don't think I actually had a goal, really. Um, I think in hindsight is to get any cross-country flying in was quite an achievement, really. Um, but obviously, ice creams on the beach are always a good goal. As for next year, for me, um, I it would be really nice to do another 200k flight. It's been five years. It will be six years by the time next next year comes around. But um, the main thing for me actually is not so much the cross country flying. It's doing another Volbiv trip, um, which is good, likely going to be in in July. Um, I just that's where my real enthusiasm is uh, right now with flying. It's the Volbiv. Um, yeah, it's basically all about having fun. Um, if there's any more questions, now's your last chance, really. Or, or just ping me a message on, um, you know, Telegram. Um, that's no problem at all. Um, if no one's putting their hands up, I'll go on to the next slide. Ah, <laughs> thanks, Jonathan. <laughs> it's funny, actually, on some of those... Jonathan has written incredible bladder control for eight for 200 uh, kilometers with no XCP. Um, on some of those long flights, you know, I just I don't drink very much in the flights. I know you, everyone says you should hydrate and and having a P tube that obviously helps you do that. But um, no, I just most of those flights I'm able to carry on without uh, without any accidents right thanks everyone uh it's brilliant to have so many of you here oh uh, right we've got some more questions coming in favorite in-flight food um bananas and just cereal bars is what i go for um yeah any other questions i've missed no thanks thanks all for for spending your thursday night with me favorite in-flight movie <laughs> You're in a th your own 360 IMAX movie the whole time you're flying, so just soak it up. Bye, everyone. And like I say, I will uh, I will uh, send out a PDF of the slides. Thanks, Tim, for putting this together. Really appreciate that, mate. Nice work. Uh, no worries, Sean. Thank you for hosting it, being the compare with the mostest. Well, uh, pressing start, and I'm now going to press stop. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right. I'll catch up with everyone uh, before too long. Yeah, I'll, I'll <laughs> post the video online later. Okay. Cheers then. Bye. Cheers, Tim. Sorry, I missed it. Brilliant. Cheers, Jonathan. No worries. Yeah, great presentation. Thanks for your time. Never know, might go XC next year, eh? That'll be a first. <laughs> yeah, you could do it. So well, I have done some, just not very far. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. And it's easy to go far when you're abroad, but yeah, that's cheating, I think. <laughs> well, it's different. You know, so, flights in the Alps. Um, have their own challenges and you know everyone thinks they're easy and in a way they, they're easier but you know you've got a lot of other things to think about as uh, as Chris in my top right <laughs> knows about you know all the valley breezes and uh, you know rotor coming from mountains and things uh, yeah it's 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 definitely not a walk in the park 
right? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. I'm going to say goodbye to you all. Stay out. Yeah. <laughs> Brilliant. Thank you, Sam. Stay safe. <laughs>